Kia ora, kia ora, kia ora, it's 2023, I'm Hannah Hart. And I'm Nick Hart. And we review movies. So I hope you all had a lovely Christmas and holiday New Year period. And you, maybe you're still on holiday. And I hope the weather is nice for you, which is unlikely because Christchurch full summer is extremely temperamental and random. But we're going to start off the year looking back at 2022 with the films that really made a big impact on us, the ones that we liked the most, and we thought we might as well rank them, mm. even though it's kind of a bit mean. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not big on ranking, but you know, we have to do it. <laughs> we don't have forced to, to. We've got like guns against our heads telling us you must do top 10. My ranking will, will change week to week, so. but That's this is my current ranking. Yeah, I can't ranking. And 2022 was a great year for film. Lots of great horrors. A lot of films that were held back because of the pandemic have come out, even though the pandemic's nowhere near over. It's actually getting worse. But we won't even think about that right now. And the fact that I did COVID test this morning for a pounding headache and a sore throat. We're just going to go in and see what was great about this year, which was the escapism that is cinema. Oh, it was so good. We were really lucky to have the Film Festival, the International Film Festival here in Christchurch. It was really good. We saw a lot of great films on the big screen, which is fantastic. And there are a few of these uh, films that you can't escape from as well. But mm. we'll get to that. Well, you'll see when sounds, we talk about it. Oh, oh, it sounds juicy. <laughs> I like films that confront you and make you sort of think about things in different ways. Yes. No, I don't like just entertaining films. No, I've looked at my list and they're all pretty dark. Can't really see anything terribly like chirpy or fluffy in there, but I guess that's just sort of reflects the sort of films that I like. I should quickly say this is a Mandy t shirt because isn't it great? I love this t shirt. I just this is a Repo Man t shirt, yeah. So we're really cranking the great, we didn't even realize, but we're, we're matching today. I'm really into the whole green and black thing at the moment, but yeah, Mandy, it's so good. Oh, there was an episode of uh Del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities that was directed by. Oh, what's his name again? The guy who did Mandy? Uh, Panos Cosmatos. Panos, Panos Cosmatos. And that was a real highlight to me too. I thought that was great. It was totally bizarre and I loved it. There were some great episodes on that actually. The lady who did the Babadook did one that was really good. There's lots of Lovecraft Yeah, that stuff. episode was... Those two were the only ones I really remember. I didn't think that much of the other ones. Well, the lady... They're okay. Uh, the one who, the, the, that woman who did A Girl Walks Alone at Home at the Dark. That was good. That was really creepy. That one... It was very unsettling with all these like clucky lady things. But we sh I should talk about my favourite TV shows another time. So should we start off with our number 10 yes, and then work our way up? Good. And I've got a bunch of honourable mentions that, yeah, that were great but didn't quite make the cut. And these are films that, um, one, of the re one of the ways I incorporated them to my ranking system is how much of an impact did they make and how much do I think about them after seeing them? Because I think that's a fairly good way of kind of filtering out okay. which ones I really like. So I'm starting off with The Stranger, which is an Aussie oh, yeah. crime film by Thomas M. Wright. It stars Joel Edgerton and Sean Harris. It's really, it's subtle, man. It's real slow. It's a slow burn. Mm. But it's got these moments of most, these beautiful, unexpected moments of like gorgeous cinematography, some really interesting editing choices. And there's a sinister feeling that just sort of emanates through the whole film. I was really captivated. I've heard other people say it was too slow, but obviously I'm, we're fans of slow cinema. Not all slow cinema, but I don't think it was that slow. And it's actually based on a real life case, which makes it even more interesting, about a young boy that went missing. And it was this huge, huge, huge case. It was the biggest crime operation in Australian history. Um, so don't expect like, you know, like close-ups of the murder or anything. Even There's no I'm... violence. It's yeah. all conversations in the same mm -hmm. way Mindhunter was, which for me is not slow at all. No. It's, you know, conversations can be very fast-moving. It also has a really beautiful score by Oliver Coates, who yes. um, played either viola or cello on um, the Under the Skin soundtrack for Mika Levy's score. <gasps> He's so good. Didn't mm. he, he, this, he did um, Significant Other as well, I think. Yeah, this yeah. Year. He's amazing. I actually really... Um... Kind and he did After Sun as well, which we just saw. After Sun, what was that one again? The one, the girl and her dad on holiday in Turkey. Oh, I didn't like that. <laughs> I well, the it was it was okay, but, but it wasn't like nearly it. as good as we were hoping. Really wanted to try and fit in as many films as we could before we did this. I also haven't seen Drive My Car, so that probably yeah. would probably get on my list. And I don't know why, but we just keep not seeing it because there's so many other things to see. Just going back to After Sun, um, it was chosen in the top 50 films of 2022 as number one right. by the 
British Film Institute, Sight and Sound, and what? which is cheeky because they produced it. So of course it's their number one. That's why we watched it actually, because I wanted to see what the big deal was about. And quite frankly, I don't see the big deal. I mean, I, I, Nick mm. had to. We were, watched it like two or three days ago, and Nick's like, "Remember that movie?" But I just nothing. It's very ordinary. Yeah. There's nothing special about it. It's weird how that made number one. Do not agree. Had one that. good scene where the dad cries. But <laughs> <laughs> was that, was that. I do appreciate that they depict what I think is depression in the father figure, single mm. dad. He's depressed. It was very accurately done i think and you don't often get to see that kind of side of depression like the sudden silence from someone who was being chatty the depression that sort of like suddenly comes on but i don't think it was a good film i, I really think it was i don't think it was a bad film it wasn't bad but it wasn't good it was like eh. i mean i rated it seven out of ten i think you, you i think you said you had to as well I said... no i gave it a five. Oh, jeez i really i Harsh yeah, critic. it's not really yeah i liked i liked it slightly better than the the daughter the lost daughter. lost daughter yeah which I did not like at all. Um, but yeah. So there we go. I've got the stranger at number 10. Okay. <laughs> the right <of> way. <laughs> okay. My number 10 is Earwig. Which oh, that's so creepy. By um, Lucille Hudsey Halilovic, mm -hmm. um, who used to be in a relationship with Gaspar Noé. Um, but I've always oh, preferred lady. her films to Gaspar's mm -hmm. films. I, I mean, I like some of his films. Climax, of Climax course. is really good. And I can't dispute that the, the, the cinematography, what they did with. with you know, just everything in Into the Void was pretty amazing, but I yeah. just don't, I think he's... And I, 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 I thought Love was very well made too, but it's, it's so very hard, hard to watch. I hate you know. that movie. I've seen it like maybe two or three times. And oh, how could it's, you? It's hard putting yourself through it again. I, I saw it in the movie, at the, in the cinema when it came out, and um, um, it was, we had th 3D glasses. And, oh, yeah! Yeah, and there was a, that's how it was shot, and there's a, like a, a cum sh close up cum shot shot and the whole audience jumped backwards because it kind of like felt like it was flinging into your face I hated, <laughs> it's quite I funny hated that movie. Mm. anyway she's cool though yeah she's so she's, she's really cool. Wife, she's very cool i thought it was um a, a, yeah like a continua continuation of her other films evolution and innocence both of which i love she just evolution's she awesome she takes yeah. a long time to make films mm. maybe it takes her ages get funding but it feels like it takes her a long time to actually prepare the, mm. the stories and everything the production um but yeah I'm, I'm always looking out for new films by her and this one was mm. really really cool what did you think of the story it was really unsettling uh, the setting it's just creepy yeah definitely the imagery sort of stays with you a lot of people it's, it's interesting yeah, it's a very interesting film yeah a lot of people kind of said nothing much happens but i, I felt like from halfway through it starts to really pick up there's more than enough pace. going on yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little hard to decipher but there are like these clues in it mm. i mean it's 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 weird in a good way yeah it's definitely yeah it's about this girl that needs teeth replaced when they're made out of ice yeah, it's, I love it. It's, love got this, idea. it's got this, maybe you feel kind of dirty, it's got this sort of icky feeling about it, but that's not a bad thing necessarily, but it's, it's yeah, it's bizarre. I, but yeah, I appreciated mm. it for what it is. It's quite mm. an interesting film. Certainly not a bad film, and it looks quite gorgeous, even I though it's very it. dark. It's got a score by um, three people, but one of the three people is Warren Ellis, who collaborates with Nick Cave uh, yeah, a yeah. lot, and in my opinion has kind of contributed the really interesting synth based um, element of his music mm -hmm. over the last few albums um, and he does scores yeah, with right. him so I know he lives mm. in Paris which is probably why he collaborated on the film so yeah quite underrated I think that film. Mm. I think it was people didn't really get it she's she an underrated director in general is she I thought evolution did quite well not really oh that's stupid <laughs> how annoying <laughs> anyway moving on to number nine which was resurrection for me by Andrew Simmons yeah, Sorry, that was seems. great. Uh, Rebecca Hall is absolutely at her very, very best. She's also in the Night House, which is really good. Mm -hmm. But this, like, you're like, okay, well, this woman is one of the greatest actresses of, or actors of her generation. She's remarkable. And it's also starring Tim Roth. A lot of what's happened, the trauma in the film, is just sort of referred to. It's not shown, but... Boy, that is a creepy, intense film. Like, mm. if you want to, it, it really accurately depicts what it's like to live with anxiety, PTSD, panic attacks. It's really very broody and unsettling film. And I can't stop thinking about some of the lines of dialogue, like these, 
Tim Roth asks Rebecca's character sort of to do him these kindnesses, which involve strange things. Best character he's played in a long time. Creepiest character. It's a really, it's really memorable. interesting film. Yeah. 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 What did you You liked it as well. I, I loved it, yeah. Fascinating film. Once again, people are like, oh, it's a bit slow, nothing really happens. But man, no, stuff is happening. Just pay freaking attention. Mm. You're just going to allow yourself to be immersed in that world. But yeah, We're I was so really used to explosions that. and yeah. kind of fights and things that, that films like that, like. Um, people think that nothing happens, but a lot's happening. It's a, a real, it's a true psychological thriller. It really is. It's, it's fantastic. Mm. I'm really still blown away by that film. Highly, highly recommend you see it if you haven't. Nine yep. for you? Nine for me is Stars at Noon. Ah, I thought you'd Claire have Denis. I mean, oh, I really yeah. liked both that and both sides of the blade, but probably Stars at Noon a little bit more. Yes, I feel the same way. And I think about Stars at Noon sometimes as well. Like mm. scenes from it, I still kind of keep popping up in my head. Yeah. Mm. I just like the setting mm. a lot and the music by Tinder Sticks. I'm not usually that fussed in them. I especially find that guy's voice um, yeah, it's really a bit irritating, but... But that score was really cool. I could mm. tell that he was um, really kind of mining the early 70s releases of Miles Davis, um, the more sort of experimental tracks. Mm. So that was cool. Yeah, there was some really cool. There was a, an original track that they'd done for the film that we really liked. Yeah, yeah, they always do that. Mm. It's like songs as well. Yeah, I mean, it is quite song-based, all their stuff. But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I really liked and the performances by Margaret Qualley she, and she, Joel Wynn look really good. She's in The Leftovers, which how I was introduced to her, and I love The Leftovers, mm. the TV show, and she is great. I'm really glad she's working with a director like Claire Denis. I think yeah, she's yeah. one of those real up-and-comers that um, has always kind of made an impression on me ever since I first saw her in The Leftovers. There's just something about her. She's She's just got that, I don't know. A lot of people depth. kind of discovered her through Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. She was just talking to your mum about. Oh yeah, I think I've seen that. Very forgettable movie to me, actually. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was it. one of his better films in a long time, actually. I'm not that big. I really don't like Django Unchained and... Um, Hate the Light? Yeah, well, I don't dislike that one as much. What's but, the other one, the um, Nazi one? Yeah, I don't mind that, but mm. it, I feel like his 90s films were a lot better. Memorable. Maybe I haven't even seen it. I can't really remember. Well, any film it's, with like, Hollywood in the title, I get confused. It's with. set... Um, with its features, the Polanski murders, the, the, um, Maybe I haven't seen it. it's sort of about that dark period of the late 60s in Hollywood. Maybe I haven't seen it. Maybe I should see it. Yeah, you should. I mean, Especially if she's in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Should we move on to number eight? Yep. Oh, um, yeah, hang on. I was oh, just going to say, also, it's got um some really good cameos by Benny Safdie and oh, yes. John C. Riley. Yes. Which I just wanted to mention. That was yeah, I love both of them very much. We actually mm. we have reviewed quite a few of these. So if you just scroll down, see what we've done. We've done Stars at Noon and Both Sides of the Blade if you want to see that. We've seen a, actually quite a few of the things on here we've actually reviewed. Yep. Obviously because we like them so much we did a review on them. So. We're gonna double up on a few films as well, so it will be a so. quicker video than usual. <laughs> <laughs> My number eight is Smile, Parker Finn's debut film. He wrote and directed it. It's great. Mm. It's a great. It's, it's, it just it, it was like kind of leaning into the J horror era of of horror. It's fresh. It's unpretentious. It's creepy as hell, and the creature is great. Really good score by um, Christabel Tapia de Vere, uh, mm -hmm. who did the Utopia score. I love him. Mm. Love Utopia. What a great series. Totally and Girl with it. the Gifts. Yes, yes, shit, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what to say about it. We've already reviewed it. I really liked it. It was a lot of fun, and it was creepy, and it was just a little bit different, but a little bit, like, definitely leaning into its, like, influences as well. Yeah. So it was just a nice, nice, tasty, fun, enjoyable ride. J-horror is probably my favourite sub-genre mm. of horror, so yeah. any American film that seeps in that, mm. that influence is something I'm looking forward to. So yeah, I, I liked it a lot more than I thought I would actually. Yeah. Just with that title, Smile, kind of it put me off for a while. See, for the get go, I just don't find smiles creepy. I do. <laughs> mm. People staring at you right in the eyes and smiling. It's like, oh, okay. What was your number eight? Uh, my number eight was Decision to Leave. Oh, it's number eight. Poor old Decision to Leave. <laughs> well, it's hard. There were so many good films um, in the past year, so it's 
difficult. You, mm. Is this on your list as it well? It sure is, and it's got a much higher placement than that, I well, must say. if someone else mentions the film <laughs> that is on the list, I feel like we should both just talk about it then. Okay, Be well... Because mm. otherwise we're going to be talking about it twice, and okay. we can't converse as much. Well, he's got it at eight. I've got it at one, mm. because Park Chang-woo is kind of, like, amazing. And, but it also, like, the thing is, my top three are really interchangeable with how I'm feeling on the day. So it could be one, and it could be two, it could be three. But it's it's mm. in that top three for me. Yeah, my top three are constantly changing. I've had to rejiggle them today, actually. Yeah, it's blooming hard to write. Decision to leave is easily my... Not easily, it's definitely my favourite of his films. Wow, yeah. Um, Th Thirst mm. as well, I really love. Yeah. So those two are probably my favourites, but... I do think he's hit like a new pinnacle of his career. It's it's like Hitchcock level, fantastic. You're a big fan of Old Boy, aren't you? Yes, I, like I don't like, like that as much. I don't dislike it, but it's just didn't really stick. With I like me. heaps of his films. I really like Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance. Mm. We do a whole video on it anyway, if you want to like yeah. hear more about our thoughts. But ah, oh, it was so good. I hope you all got to see it in the cinema if you had the opportunity. But if you didn't, try to get the biggest screen you can. It's an epic, epic, mm. epic experience. Fantastic film. Really well acted with Tang Wei and Park Hai Yi. Or Yi Hai Il. Sorry, I don't know how to say his name. But they're great. They're such a good actor. I just wish the score kind of lived up to its, um, yeah, that's, yeah. you know, its Probably noir its leanings. Point. Like it, it was, if it was more like Vertigo, not that it should be like it, but, mm. but as good as... That it just was a bit forgettable, the score. In the same way to me that the menu's score was really throwaway. You did not like that at I all. I just, I really didn't like it. And then when I saw that it was um, the guy that had done Colin Stetson who did Colour Out of Space and yeah. Hereditary and is about to do Uzumaki, I was like what? shocked because he's usually really what? interesting. Um, he's a sax player and he usually kind of uses saxophones in really unusual ways. But it was just so generic, that score. I just yeah. was expecting to see some, you know, some score person I don't like. Yeah, I don't think I remember the score from Decision to Leave at all, which is not a good sign. So I probably would say that would be its weakest point. Mm. But I should, yeah, I'd put the menu on my honourable mentions, especially as someone who's worked in hospitality. <laughs> I yeah, it was fun thought. at the time. I yeah. Like I've said to a few people, I just feel like it's a bit forgettable. It's not... Mm gonna stay with I enjoyed me. it but it was yeah not one of those like wow films mm. um so you've got decision to leave at your eight my number seven was Madres Paralelas or Parallel Mothers by Omadoba it's got Penelope Cruz it's got Melania Smith is it on your list it's on my it's for number four on my list oh wow so. okay there's another one we reviewed so there's gonna be a few double ups here Oh, I'm glad you liked it so I love it I loved I it really love it we've got a huge mm. poster of it in our kitchen yeah, it makes you so happy. Helps us cook yummy food. Yeah. Uh, what can we say about Omadoba? Like, he's just, he's the man. He's, mm. he's the greatest. Any of him. his films that come out, I'm always really excited about. And this one, like this one, all. yeah, they, this one kind of went quite deep into the fascism era of, of, um, Spain, right? Mm. <laughs> What's going on? My brain today, I, I woke up with the worst headache. I'm just not quite with it. But yeah, the fascist um, history of Spain and the damage that that's wrought and how generations are still affected by that. But at the same time, it's also about these two mothers that end up accidentally swapping babies and the story about how they come together. It's so it's good. It's a bit of a thriller, really. It is a little, yeah, yeah. It's And it's beautiful. And it's just, yeah, he's, he's honestly just one of the most amazing directors. My favourite films of his are actually sort of thrillers mm. as well like um darker ones like the skin i live in mm. and broken embraces and um live flesh things like that mm. but, yeah but i love them all and he gets he always works with really interesting collaborators um mm. alberto iglesias his scores are amazing i mean he's probably in my opinion the closest to a bernard herman we have still alive these days yeah um and his production design is just, yeah yeah the cinematography oh, oh wow like it's like every set is a photograph it's so beautiful mm. he's an interior designer yeah, as well you can tell oh he's so talented i love his colors yeah there are, i think there are even some of his um some of his photography is on the wall in the you know kitchen scenes and stuff in the movie mm, yeah that would make sense yeah, he's incredible. Such a... What do you call someone that does, like, so much? Like, Jack David Lynch does so much in his films. So, 
I don't know, multitasker. No, just, there's a lot, a lot of himself yeah. in his films in so many ways. A lot like David Cronenberg and stuff. So, what was your number seven? Seven for me was Blonde. Ah, yes. Yeah, you'd have that somewhere. Which I, yeah, I really liked. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people hated it. Oh, most, it was good. Most people seem to hate it. Was, it was it like a horror, like loosely based around the idea of Marilyn mm, Monroe. Exactly, yeah. Which I liked. <laughs> um, I really liked. Again, speaking of Warren Ellis, his score with Nick Cave was a big part of why I liked it. Um, it was very Bud Lamenti, actually, which, and it's so sad that he just died. Yeah, I'm still struggling to mm. process that. He was a big influence on me in my teens. Mm. Yeah. I grew up listening to Battle of Menti. Mm. Yeah. yeah, very emotional music for me. Yes. Mm. And I was, I'm a big fan of Andrew Dominic as well. Mm. So mm -hmm. he's another one of these directors that takes a long time mm. to release something. So I think, it, it, like I was um, thinking with Lucille Havzi Halilovic, that um, I think he just finds it really hard to get his um, films financed because his ideas are, you know, quite different. They're not sort of things that would be big money makers on paper. So mm. I think it takes a lot of talking producers <laughs> into working with him. He's beautiful visual aesthetic. Yeah, based on the book by Joyce Carol Oates, mm. which we have, and I really want to get yeah. stuck into. I want resolve to read more this year. Mm, I'd love to read it too. I, it looks so it's good. just so big that's the only thing that puts me it's off. It's like seven hundred pages or something. Yeah, Tom through that in a few days. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, number six, are we up to? Yes. Are you done with long? Yep. My number six was Crimes of the Future, Cronenberg's new film. Yeah, it's number five on my list. Ah! Oh, it's quite similar, yeah. We we love Cronenberg, and mm. I think that this we saw it quite a few times actually. I think we saw it three times or something. I love I love this film. I, I love the mm. the machinery that they get fed in I, and, and and operated in. I love the idea of this performance art and all of the acting was great and very much part of his universe. I think late Cronenberg is very different to early is, Cronenberg, yeah. and I think a lot of people because this story was written just before Extends mm. in the 90s, people expected it was going to be like that. But his filmmaking, you know, especially a perfect example is Cosmopolis of a late period film, which, which is a lot of talking. I mean, you know, they're sort of moving around and there's mm. some interesting set pieces, but um, Next to the stars. a lot slower and more austere than his early yes. films. Whereas I think he got a lot of the elements that we know and love about Cronenberg, but incorporated it into more of his late period kind of work. Mm. Yeah. But visually it's delightful. And I really enjoyed the performances. I found it quite funny. Yeah, it had all yeah, the elements yeah, that I really enjoy from him. There's a lot of humour in Cronenberg. Yeah. I, I mean, watch humor. any interview with him and you'll see how hilarious he is. He's always kind of, him and um, Vigo Mortensen mm. have a kind of a long running romance where they're kind of like um, making fun of each other, which is in quite mean ways sometimes, but you can tell they find it fun. So. It's pretty cute. Mm. They're pretty adorable. And a great score too by Howard Shaw. Yes, fantastic. He's, you know, in my opinion, one of the most important score composers out there. Yeah, he did not let us down. That was amazing. And just, yeah. It, uh, I just, the production design consistently is just so mm. interesting. It's the character all in itself. Yeah. So I really appreciated that. One of my, easily one of my favourite directors too. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Uh, what's your number six? Um, number six for me is Speak No Evil. Ah, I've got that on my list at number four. Mm. So, <laughs> such a funny list. <laughs> this is one of the ones where I said you can't really escape. Yeah, from it. that's true. Like it's a very confrontational film. Um, it ever. Like I, I, it's very <laughs> rare I watch something and I'm, I feel like it's hitting me over the head, <laughs> but it really did. Like it's quite savage this film. Isn't but I, I love it. I, I love being confronted by things. It really shook us up. Really, really shook us up. And people, for people who are saying it was unrealistic the way these parents behaved. Some people would. Some people, but then not sort of people who would have ended up at that house in the first place. Mm. And I do think it's a really good example of how people can be like 
gaslit and sort of seduced by sociopathic narcissistic people into doing all kinds of things that they're uncomfortable with and they yeah. keep having their boundaries pushed but they keep allowing it to happen it's a fascinating psychological horror that i think is actually really accurate in a lot of ways i do think people respond like this sometimes it's so it's it's uh, it's it's horrible but i like films that really take it to the edge and then push you right over the edge mm -hmm. it's not something i'm going to be forgetting anytime yeah, soon yeah. yeah i don't want to give too much away about it but like it, of a certain genre it's one of the best ever made i think of a certain kind of genre we did a we did a video about this too yeah, didn't we we? Did. i mean i think all of most of these films we've reviewed um, I think so, actually. In videos, so. We didn't do The Stranger or Resurrection, but I've got yeah. a whole bunch of honourable mentions. I'll just chuck in there right towards the end. Yeah. So, shit. So you had that as your... This is going to be complicated now. It is a little bit. Because my next two films, you have, we've already covered. But that's all right. Um, we'll just... <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's, inter it's good that we have so many that are the same. And yeah. it's interesting we replace them. But then again, as we said, it's kind of a fluctuating thing. Have we finished Speak No Evil? I think we have. Have okay. we? Yep. Yeah, because we've said done a whole video on it, but we just see it. It's if you like being fucked around and fucked up by your movies, mm. watch that because a little little do it. Yeah. Um, really well acted as well. Practically. Okay, so number five. Yep. What have you got? You've got Crimes of the Future at number five. Yep. I've got Triangle of Sadness. It's my number two. Ah! <laughs> this is this is this is hilarious. Okay. Well, I'm really glad that we were both kind of like we have such similar taste. It's, it's cool. It's cool. Mm. It's really cool. Triangle of Sadness by okay. Ruben Ost, Ostlund. Ost, yep. Ostlund. Ostlund. He's great. I, it's such an anti-capitalist, anti-consumerism movie. It's got the most demented sense of humour that I found absolutely delightful. It's gorgeous to look at. The acting is phenomenal. It's very, very subversive and the kind of film that I'm just so glad it gets made because mm. it kind of sums up exactly how I feel about obscenely wealthy yeah, people. Same tax dodging obscenely wealthy people i kind of feel this way about so yeah i i loved it it's a lot of fun it's uh, some really important things to say about society and hierarchy and social structures and hyper capitalism so, it has, has sort of um fascination with social things mm. extends from he was saying um he's re he was really into the films of michael haneke early uh -huh, on okay that makes um sense. and he said that his first three films are, are like and heavily indebted to them but i can see it in this even as well i mean it's more humorous yeah hanukkah is much film. more brutal and kind of and disturbing i've recently just been showing hannah some films watch benny's video recently it was good yeah you really didn't like funny games but mm. there's some... it's too cruel for me i really this is a lot because you know i'd love to watch um code unknown with you next with juliette binoche which is um sort of one of his quite sort of the editing is quite sort of abstract in a lot of ways like the, the it's not like a single sort of plot film a lot of things are happening in it um like 71 fragments a chronology of chance i think that's the title he's that a was really, a really good one yeah he's well. he's a very very good director Being yeah i really video, like was film. really and the piano teacher of course. of course yeah you know he's he's certainly really yeah fantastic director on every front but I, yeah subject matter can be really disturbing whereas i think ruben's yeah. work is a lot more accessible the square was really great i really enjoyed that so i think yeah i don't know triangle sanders was just delightful to me in mm. so many ways same yeah it was a lot of fun watching it it was great i was cackling a lot i don't yeah. often cackle especially not in the cinema but there was a lot of that going on mm. so yeah um what's your number five well, that's the thing. Crimes of the Future. And then Parallel Mothers is number four, so I should just do my number three. Yeah, I'll say I'll quickly go through my number four was Speak No Evil, hmm. which you had as your number yep. six. Okay, so now we're on to your number three, is that right? Number three is Bones and All. Wow, that's my number three as well. What oh, the? That's, that's amazing. <laughs> well, well, it was my number one. Yeah. But um, I, I had to move some things around, which I'll explain when I get to my number one. This is exactly what happened with me. Mm. Ah, what can we say about Bones and All that hasn't already been said in our previous video? Um, it's it's a masterpiece. Mm, I, I love it. it. He's another director. I just kind of, it seems that I love everything they release. So, mm. yeah. I mean, even his next film, Challenges, is set 
in the world of tennis and I'm just yeah, not interested <laughs> in sport at all but I know I'm gonna love the film he's such a boy what a what a what a director mm. I loved th this film yeah it really got under my skin <laughs> and if you love filmmaking yeah. you just love um, you know watching good filmmaking mm. for the filmmaking mm. itself rather than the story or then he's someone that's always gonna interest you so melancholy mm. um and beautiful and yeah some absolutely all, all the whole cast was amazing and some really like steam scene stealing moments from the character sully yeah. uh, it's just <laughs> mark rylance is yeah he's incredible I mean, he just keeps getting better and better um he's very memorable in the last few films I've seen of him. He just always steals the show. Yeah, and considering Chalamet and who was the woman? The, the young woman? Um, Taylor Russell. Yeah, considering those two of them stars, like it's, it's saying a lot. Mm. Performances are all just outstanding. I love the story. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's based it's, on yeah. a sort of a young adult novel. Mm. But it feels definitely 18 plus. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, I do, do not think adults are excluded from enjoying this film. It's certainly no, no Twilight. As some people apparently Thank have been God. comparing it to, but I don't. I haven't seen all the Twilight, and I don't ever want to. But from all the little bits that I've been forced to witness, because it's such a, been a cultural phenomenon, I don't think there's any similarities. They're just very generic. They're just, you know, they're outsiders. Um, they're cannibals. They're mm. born that way, and how they're negotiating life as flesh eaters. We actually have a song about. Well, we have a couple songs about cannibals, but yeah. It's one called Emerald Corpse, which is like really gets into the nitty gritty of ingesting somebody. Which is, it's a really upbeat song as well. I've just been watching a documentary about Army Hammer. Yeah, <laughs> speaking of cannibals. That guy, man. Okay, yeah. I, I saw some footage of one of the women that he has mistreated and mm. it was really That's upsetting. That, well, yeah, there's no acting there. I completely believe her. That is one twisted scenario and it's weird how he's not already locked up, but he's lost roles, so we'll see how that pans out. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's actually quite related to Bones and all because he's worked with Guadagnino before. It was crazy. I mean, yeah. all this stuff about him being a cannibal came out and then, like, very shortly after that, it was announced Luca Guadagnino's next film was about <laughs> cannibals. I was like, what? What? Very you know, crazy. Um, it was just bizarre timing. Mm. I mean, Guadagnino couldn't have known about no. it. I don't think this well, is the sort of thing that he would have shared with the director. I don't know. No, no, he wouldn't have known about it while it was happening. I mean, no. and he would have had put the movie together before he even knew. Like, I don't yeah. think Arnie, Arnie would, Arnie would have ever have told him. Hmm. Yeah, just it was a really weird coincidence because he was in "Call Me by Your Name." I don't know. That guy's always given me a weird feeling, so I'm not very surprised. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like it's a Ken doll. Something no off about him. Yeah, <laughs> it's something. Yeah. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's a harrowing documentary, but hmm. um, that yeah. Um, I'm finding it quite challenging to get through. Of course, like there's always that bias that might be inherent in certain things. Mm. Um, some of it, I think that it is a bit unbalanced, but I'm not saying I don't believe these women because I mean, Hannah obviously has got some serious problems. His whole family's really, really, really messed up. Um, so you, we both had bones in all two. For mm. this, for number two, you had Triangle of Sadness. Is that right? Yes. Triangle so I can only do my number one. Okay, well, my number two was The Innocence, which you don't have on your list, funnily enough. That might have actually been released in 2021, but we didn't see it here in New Zealand in the theatres mm. until this year. The Innocence is by Eskul Vought. We've got a video about it. Um, it is a fascinating, unnerving, edge of your seat, I'm going to throw up, I have so much anxiety, kind of tense exploration of whether or not children are kind of inherently good or inherently evil are you made that way are you turned into that as you get older it's a very subtly um kind of superpower ish but it's not nothing like the heavy-handed grotesqueries that hollywood puts upon extra you know sensory powers it's very subtle um they're sort of exploring these powers as these dynamics are coming into play it is honestly one of the most tense films I've ever watched. It's an adult children's film. 
<laughs> yes, well, the children were too young to see it, mm. you know. But and and I wondered how on earth did he work with these children and not traumatize them? But um, there was this really long process, and from what I can tell, Esko Voigt really has knows how to work with children. He's very like extremely um, aware of you know what's what's not right to sort of bring up with children and somehow he's got these amazing performances there are some incidences of animal cruelty that are really they're quite realistic so i can understand why not many just not you know not many not not everybody could get through this film because the thing is you can see humans going through all this horrible stuff but when you see it happen to an animal it's a lot more disturbing if it's a you know a dog or a cat or even like a worm in, in this film so I understand it's not for everybody, but um, it's gorgeous. It's got this, it almost looks like a Kubrick film, but in a more understated way, lots of slow sort of pulls and draws. And it's just absolutely amazing. Um, had me on the edge of my seat and I, I just, I just think he's remarkable. And I'm really hoping he does more films like this because I just think he's fantastic. And there's a whole review on it if you want to see it. Mm. So yeah, but I really, I cannot stop thinking about that film and I've seen it twice now. Both times I just was absolutely blown away. So good, so good. One of the best films I've seen in like years. Oh, this good. One. So you've got your number one, this one that I didn't like. Yes, so I'll just go through my honourable mentions. Um, Flux Gourmet, even though I fell asleep a few times. Yes, that's on my but honorables. I, I did like it. Um, I did. Yeah, ben it Benedetta. Fun. Yes. Terrifier 2. It was all right. But, it, was I mean, right. It, was it was fun. Moment. It was fun all the time. Both Sides of the Blade yep. by Claire Denis, Barbarian. Mm. I, I don't know, actually. I think that's. I think it's a little bit overrated. People, I, that was like number one on bloody dis disgusting no. top 15 horrors. No. Yeah, they didn't even include Smile in it, and they included Deadstream. What? And that was not Hellraiser good. and all these other oh, shitty films. No, that's really. There was. There I even was, commented and said, "What an embarrassing list." Yeah, that's bad. There's <laughs> the sadness. There's the innocence. There was like so many other really, really good films that could have been on that list. That's bollocks. These are just you know these honourable mentions. They're not. The sadness incantation. Yeah. I also have Dark Glasses by Dario Argento. <laughs> I just I love Dario. It was, Dario. Good, it, was but, yeah. it was one of his better films in yeah. years and years though, yeah, so that's, that's why true. I include it. Yeah. And Three Thousand Years of Longing um, by the director of Mad Max: Fury Road. I still haven't seen that one. Um, it, it was quite fun in the movie theater. Did I had forgotten it, it a bit, but you know, not the sort of thing I'm usually into. But Tilda's great. I love her in anything. She's always good. Um, Mr. Organ. Yeah, that was on my list, on my honourable mentions, best documentary of the year probably. And this actually came out in late. 2021 i think but in new zealand it didn't come out until 22 maybe house of gucci oh yeah i, I loved that it was really fun actually. way more than i thought i would <laughs> yeah that so was a hoot i'm looking forward to watching it again yeah that so. was that's it. i think it's going to get become like a cult classic that one mm. sure. oh yeah yeah like showgirls <laughs> and um and the good nurse yes that's on my list as well recently that had a really cool soundtrack as well actually yeah i'll really quickly run through mine i had knit tram the sadness incantation she will really cool um female oh, yeah. director i loved that i almost that was it produced to by dario argento uh -huh. yeah. that's really good if you can find it she will it's fantastic that's a great moment presented by him sometimes yeah. directors can talk another bigger director into presenting something like there's a film called nudja um a vampire black and white vampire film from the 90s and they got david lynch to present it so. <laughs> weird <laughs> That should have been on the top ten in Fangoria or Bloody Awful or whatever it was called. <laughs> bloody disgusting. Bloody disgusting. Sorry, but it's a bloody awful list. Why wasn't she mm. will on that list? That was that's like in my top ten horror films mm. of the year easily. They had some really really questionable ones on there. Like mm. X was number two. Oh no! And Pearl was number nine or ten. Oh, or Pearl is so much I better know. than X. I've got Pearl on my honourable mentions, but uh, not X. It made me not that I really respect them or anything, but I've lost all respect for them now. That is bloody awful. Yeah. Bloody awful. That's terrible. They have no taste, clearly. No Sebo was really good. That would be on my mm, top ten of the year. His, his films are always good. Vivarium was very good. Oh, I love well. Vivarium. Yeah, no Sebo was really, really good. Like that would be on my top ten horrors of the year, mm. easy. And there was this great film called Significant Other, which is like a twisted kind of relationship tale. Yeah, it was that surprisingly good. I loved that. Like the really interesting cinematography, editing, the acting was nuts. The lady from It Follows that I adore. Micah Monroe. Micah Monroe, yes. And who was the soundtrack by? The Oliver Coates. Oliver Coates. Yeah. That's on the top ten. That might have made it right to the top, top 
of my top horror films of the year. I loved that. That's been kind of ignored, but definitely yeah. see Significant Other if you can find it. It shouldn't be that hard. It was great. I, I adored it. it. It just keeps changing tone a lot. One minute it's like a romance, and then it's kind of like a thriller, and then it's kind of a horror, and then it goes back to comedy, kind mm. of. So I think people were struggling with the abrupt changes in tone, but nah. That'll get great. a bit of a cult following. I think sure. so. Yeah. That definitely would be on my top 10 for the year. Significant Other was great. I also see The Good Nurse. That was really mm. interesting and horrifying. Just the, the medical system in America and how it's involved with what happened here. They basically let it happen. It is so messed up. It's like one of the most prolific prolific serial killers in America's history. So Jessica Chastain, she is such a chameleon. Mm. I adore she's her. Great. She's just it's so different. Than Eddie Redmayne was amazing. Yeah, in I usually find him very forgettable. Oh, okay. I'm not a big fan, but he, yeah, oh, he was so good. The the scene where he's been questioned in the police station that's pretty intense. I highly recommend you all see that one. Mm. That almost made it to my top ten. That was very very well done. I put Hellraiser on there because I actually quite enjoyed that. There were some things I didn't agree with because Cenobites don't fucking run. Do not run. Yeah. But um, I like the creation of the Cenobite at the end. And I, th I really like the director. So I thought yeah, I'd chuck it in there. I didn't mind it. It wasn't that I bad. I, I, I was had, a bit disappointed. But, yeah. yeah, I was a little disappointed. But at the same time, I wasn't trying to hope too much. I do think Got Mick should have been hmm. the, main he the main Cenobite because that was a casting choice that was just so overlooked. I mean, was, yeah, I mean um i also put barbarian though I, I really liked i really liked parts of it i really really did but i do think it got a bit overhyped so i wouldn't have put it on my top smile 10. is so much better though. smile is so much better blonde is on my honorable mentions obviously um everything everywhere all at once though it, yeah, I, I think it was it, it wasn't really my cup of tea but i think mm, the message same. is super super important yeah, um, yeah. And I think it, it, it reached a lot of people, and I, I mean, the actors of that. Was, I just was wasn't into the endless fights, really. That's the, yeah, you don't that, like that kind of I stuff. Don't, I don't like martial arts things, so I just found it, I, yeah, but I got a bit sleepy during it. I think it was a little too, too chirpy for me, like a little bit too like heavy or something. Mm. I don't know, but I do think that that film deserves all of the accolades. It's a fantastic, fantastic movie. Just because it wasn't my cup of tea doesn't mm. mean that I can't see how awesome it was. And there were aspects that I really, really enjoyed about it. Um, it just, it was a little bit, I love Swiss Army Man, but I don't know, I just, I still think that that was a really good film and totally deserves all love and should, more films should be made of that kind of, you know, sort of genre, you know, it's a bit bonkers and I like that. Yeah. Um, Pearl was on there because I, I love Pearl, especially the end with that maniacal smile at the end. Um, there's this weird kind of clone movie called Duel, which I really liked. That was very like kind yeah, of yeah. odd tone. Brissonian. Very, very Brissonian. Very kind of peered back but i really liked we had seen aaron paul in a film like that. yeah yeah I, I that was great um mm. i liked it i really enjoyed that film i thought yeah. that was really interesting weird strange i liked it though but it was it was also kind of yeah i don't know it's a great wee film it's about kind of clones about when you find out if you've got a clone and what happens and then you know there can only be one sort of thing but it's not what you think anyway there's also watcher which was that brilliant sort of hitchcockian film i found that a bit I liked it a lot, but the, the that was the number people... like two or three or something on Bloody Is Disgusting's list, and I was like, "What?" It's, it's good. It's really good, and it's a Hitchcocky, Hitchcocky and kind of time. But I forgot all about it, so mm. that to me doesn't mean it makes it into a top ten. Sorry about it. Yeah, overrated. I had Stars of Noon, Mr. Organ, Flux Gourmet, Fresh is a cannibal mm. movie that easily makes it into my top ten horrors of the year. That is so gleeful and disturbing. So don't watch it unless you're a little bit of a sicko, but you'll find it really fun if you like horror. It's kind of a comedy, but it's so, so, so messed up. But really, really, really fun. And also I would put A Wounded Fawn onto my top 10 horrors of the year. Yeah, that was that cool. That was cool. Very arty, you know, but not in a, not in a pretentious way. Just kind of It like, wasn't arty. It, it just like, um, like refer referred to a lot of art historical yeah. stuff like um, Leonora Carrington and... Um, Remedios Faros, like um, people, you know, sp Spanish female painters from mm. the sort of early mid 20th century, I think. I knew straight away it was going to be about the Furies of the Harpies because of the sculpture. It's really cool sculpture. It's got lots of masks and like women being creatures. And I, I loved, I loved, loved, loved it. Um, yeah, I, I, it's very kind of 70s jello-ish horror film vibes which and i loved it aesthetically i thought that was really really great um there was a really cool 
um, oh, Polish film called Hell Hole that we watched. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, we watched, watched it with English dub. dubs, which really, the fact that I could even put this on an honorable mention, I would put it in my top 10 actually if I could see it in Polish. It would Polish. be great without the dubs. Without the, the dubs are horrible. But even with the dubs, I still really liked mm. it. It is, it is great. There wasn't, there's not that much speaking in it. So no, it, that's it why it's not too hard to digest. It's really dark, but it's quite fun, but also Beautiful quite awful. Beautiful to look at. Yeah, awful, wonderful to look at, quite awful kind of what's going on, but mm. I don't know, I really, really liked it. I thought Hell Hole was awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah. Um, Antlers, that only, we only saw that in I 20... loved that. Film. That was so good, Very right? bleak. Hey, I've just got for us to watch the brand new film by that director, <gasps> Scott Cooper, I think. I love that. Um, it's called The Pale Blue Eye, and I think it's about um, Edgar Allan Poe, and it's got Ooh. Christian Bale in it. Gillian Anderson, isn't it? Oh, I love Gillian so much. Mm. Yeah, I, I really, really liked Antlers. Um, I love that they use lots of practical effects. It's always a big win for me, but the performance was great. It's so dark. Mm. It's like the darkest film, and it's about kind of, you know, bouncing off the opiate crisis in the Appalachian sort of region of America. So you don't, you just that alone, you could do a horror film about that, but it's, oh, it's probably the best Wendigo film outside of that one, The Hunger. Was it The Hunger? The, the one with... Um, Guy Pierce in it. What's it called? Oh, uh, Ravenous. Ravenous. Yeah, I think Ravenous and Antlers are the best two Wendigo. I love Wendigo films, and it was fantastic. Highly recommend that. The creature is amazing. Everything's everyone's great, and yet Benedetta. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, I've got my honourable hates. Oh, which I had even <laughs> I more have done fun that. compiler. Oh my gosh. Okay, what's your um, honourable hates? I in no order, but um. Family dinner. Yeah, that sucked. We we were hoping we'd really love it. This was a, we you know so paid big money to see it at the New Zealand International Film Festival. We expected it. <laughs> it was. So we could have seen Resurrection. We could have seen Speak No Evil as well. Can yeah, you imagine? But we saw Family Dinner instead. And it was sucked. terrible. Did not it was like. So bad. Just not why? Just that's a film that should never be made. This is probably my least hated one out of these lists, but I still think it's excessively <laughs> overrated. It's not. Yeah. I just think he, he, he as a director is excessively overrated. I don't I just, agree with that. I, I mean, I, like, I, I, I liked like Get, Get Out. Out. I, I, like, I love Get Out. I liked it, but I don't think it's like worthy of the best film Oscar. And But but then there's a lot of, most films they give the best on Oscar to, the best film Oscar to, I usually don't like, so it's I nothing new, I guess. But I, I was a bit surprised. I totally get why Parasite won, but I was a bit surprised at Get Out won. No, that, Deserved it. Totally. They totally deserved it. But yeah, I just think he's overrated as a director. I, I don't like, I'm not that into comedies. Yeah, so. and he's a bit he's, too Spielberg y for us. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I did not like about not mm. It was his most sort of Spielberg film yet. Yeah. Don't need that. <clears throat> um, and Loving Highsmith was a d documentary I saw about Patricia Highsmith, who I really like mm. and find her really interesting, but it was just uh, focusing on um, her sexuality. That's mm. all it focused on, That's so really. stupid. I hate documentaries that do and that. And just talk to the, sort of all these ex-partners of her. Oh, but it great. was, But anyway, it, yeah, it could have been really good. If, I mean, I just, it didn't have like any interviews with her, or maybe it had just like one tiny interview, but if it had more of that, I mm. would have enjoyed it more. Yeah, it sounds pretty great for Cashy. Yeah. Um, bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Oh, I hated, I hated that. that. So much. What a trash film. Mm. Okay, I could see what was going to happen from the first few minutes of the bloody thing. Yeah. It's it's so unsurprising, and there's just the performances are horrendous. It's terrible. It's it's so. I've bad. seen that a, 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 on a lot of end of year lists. Yeah, what the fuck? It's crazy. Guys. <laughs> um, what? Don't worry, darling. Oh yeah. I, I really didn't <laughs> like that. <laughs> We tried to do a review of that, but it kept like crapping out on us, so we gave up. Better than bodies, 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 but yeah. still not. But still just great. one I really hated, hated was the black phone, and I just oh, can't understand why what? that is rated like seven point three or something out of ten. That's some on of IMDb. the worst acting and writing and direction. It is just absolute steaming pile of feces. But for some reason, it's been really popular, and we we cannot figure that out. We yeah. don't get it. We just figured that. Yeah, lots of tasteless masses out there. So sorry if you liked it, but I'm not sorry. It sucked. It absolutely sucked. I just don't. I just think people were saying that they liked it because other people liked it or something. But if you, if you thought that was good and it was well acted, like, um, <laughs> hmm, okay, cool. cool story. This is probably my most hated on this list. Shut in. 
um, which was produced by um, what's his name? Ben, the Republican kind of uh, anti-abortion oh! guy. What's, what's his name? Ben. Ben Shapiro. Shapiro, yeah. Yeah, that one. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. Vincent Gallo was in it. I, I don't. Know. I don't know why he did it. I think he probably him. just accepted the role because it was. Ben Shapiro, and he thought it would be provocative or something. But I don't know. It's just so embarrassing that film. It is not so bad. I mean, I, I mean, like I tried to be objective because like, yeah, of course yeah. we despise Ben Shapiro. He's a disgusting little man. The Even though his like React to videos are pretty hilarious. Yeah. He's he's got a really good editing crew behind him. I gotta say that he's a disgusting little. Ah, oh, just his whole yeah. everything he stands for just makes my skin crawl. And the, but this film was objectively horrendous. So that was quite. All these like incels were like, we love it so much, man, oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> but it was not. It was not good. So have you done your number one? My number one was Decision to Leave. Oh, okay. But like I say, interchanges with Innocence and Bones and all. I can't yeah. really pick a top. They're my top three. What's okay, well, my number one, mm. and it probably wouldn't have been, but you've just recently said how much you didn't like it, yeah. so that's moved it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, nice. I, well, I don't know. Nice. Charming. It, and that's Tar by Todd Field. So just because of that, that's like so No, it's not. It was number three on my list anyway. It was actually really hard to choose between Bones and All, Tar, and Triangle of Sadness. Like it was really, really difficult. Um, but um, but I've been thinking, I've been talking with my friend Michael about Tar. Yeah, it's and your smart philosophy. With, and it's reminded me of all the things I loved about mm. it. Um, and I. I studied classical composition mm. and electronic music at university when I was like 20 or something and so I've had a, a little um, sort of brush with that the classical community and mm. it's and it's very aptly shown in this film like yeah I can't say I know anything about that world. it's very snooty and stuffy and like lots of sort of Full awful of people <laughs> yeah everyone's so horrible this is the thing everyone is so freaking horrible ugh Though I did find it kind of amusing for like the first half an hour, but then I started just getting kind of worn down by how dreadful everybody was and just the universe that they live in just is so depressing. It really, mm. it's so so weird to think behind all these beautiful like kind of orchestras that there could be these really dark oh, yeah. things and all these personalities, all this ego going. It's, it's just, a bit of a horror film. It is, yeah. I, I thought it was quite horrific in some ways. It's just in the same way, Blonde could be thought of as a mm, horror maybe. I found it really draining. I mean, Kate Blanchett is of course. She She's, she's phenomenal. She's become one of my favourite actors in the last year or two. Um, she's so I, special. I, I never beautiful. didn't like her, but so I beautiful. but I just yeah, I think she's amazing. I love how she's gotten more and more beautiful as she's gotten older and she hasn't like fucked with her face like so many other she women. She looks incredible in Nightmare so Alley. That was yeah. the one thing I liked about her. Oh yeah, that's the one thing we both like. I was like, dear God, Kate, you are looking fantastic. Mm. She's so gorgeous, but it's she's like got... a persona that comes through. It's just so She's so interesting and rich and like, I don't know, something about her is this sort of depth and richness to her personality. Yeah. She's got she's really, really good taste in films mm. as well. I she saw really a does. video where she talks about, I think, um, Abbas Kiarostami, who's one of my favourite directors, and oh, yes, yes. Um, Barbara Loden's Wanda, which is a film oh, I really yeah. love. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a great film. Isabel Hooper got... actually yeah. um, uh, released that on blu-ray in france oh, i think cool. and they've, they, they did a film uh play together the maids which is a i think it's a was it no it wasn't sean Genet. maybe an Inesco. man imagine play. seeing her on stage mm. being that close to her that'd be incredible With both of them but i really like the filmmaking itself um mm. by todd field he's only done three films he used to be an actor um he was an eyes wide shut um, in lots of films in the 90s. Yeah, Nick, Nick Nightingale. Mm. Um, and he's really, yeah, he's a jazz musician. So I think mm. Kubrick probably got someone who can actually play piano mm. realistically. He has that iconic scene score with the, the mask mm. that he puts in those white shots. His first two films, um, In the Bedroom and Little Children, I they were good. They were better than most sort of Hollywood films. They seemed very much, especially little children and the result of films like Magnolia mm. um but there there's scenes that do stick with me especially from in the bedroom it almost feels like you're watching someone's real life it's, it's, it's interesting I mean there's just, but there's just, I just I'm not a big fan of that director I'm sorry it's just not my not my cup of tea yeah well I think he's he's greatly um 
he's gone better since mm. then. I mean, he's, you know, it's, he's, it was 10 years that he's been preparing this film. Mm. And he wrote it especially for Kate Blanchett. So it would have That's been quite weird. scary if she didn't if she'd say yeah, yes. That. But apparently before he wrote it for her, she had gone up to him in a hotel lobby and said, I'd love to work with you. Mm. So I guess well, he kind of knew. But um, yeah, he takes a long time to, another one of these directors, it takes a long time mm. to get something off the ground. But I it just, yeah, it's even just the camera work. There's a scene where... Kate Blanchett's character, Lydia Tarr, is um, sort of arguing with a student of hers in like a lecture hall, and the, it's just one shot for the whole scene. Like, it's probably feels like it's five minutes long or something, and it just sort of glides very um, operatically through all these sort of um, mm, that was angles. probably my favorite it's, scene. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. But the whole film's um, quite risky in, in mm. that sort of way as well. Um, and the ending's really cool as well. I won't say what happens, but I read someone saying that um, the ending of the film might just be her imagination because mm. it sort of becomes a lot more impressionistic or surreal, really, in the last third. Yeah, it does. Um, but, yeah. I don't think it was a bad film at all. Like, there's certainly many elements there that I appreciate it, but it just wasn't really my... Wasn't really my cup of tea. I could feel you sort of switching off after yeah, halfway through. Yeah, I did. I'm, I did. I switched off. But I really did like that scene where she's interacting with the student. It was quite amazing. Mm. But yeah, just something in me was just like, oh, just nah, it's not not for me. I tried, but it just isn't my cup of tea. I hope he he doesn't take as long to make his next film because he's yeah. he's gotten so much better, and it would just be a real pity to you know waste life. <laughs> yeah, I, I I would always watch what he puts out. That's for sure. It's mm. just just I don't know. There's just something there's a disconnect between me and him as a director, and that's you know that's just taste. I mean, yeah, um, yeah. I can understand why people would have really enjoyed that film. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna. It's not like other films where I'm like, you have the what is wrong with you if you like this film? I get why people would like this film. It just wasn't really my mm. my bag. Yeah, well, that's my number one. Cool. Wow. What did you think of Alice? What did you, do we leave anything out that you liked this year? Let us know. And I do feel really bad that I haven't seen Drive My Car yet, but I will. I will see it soon. Yes, we will. And I feel I'm, bad about I feel that. like I'm going to love it. I feel like, I mean, I love, I'm a huge Murakami fan, like massive. I've pretty much read everything he's ever done. So, but yeah, I mean, I do like his kind of weird horror -y, well, not horror, but just his weird stuff. I don't know, paranormal is the right word. Just like interdimensional weirdness y stuff. I like that stuff of his. And I, I mean, I enjoy his short stories that are more based on reality, but I've never seen a film of his like that. Mm. I don't think Norwegian Wood, even though, even though it's quite like, I don't think that was a particularly good adaptation. I don't know. I just don't know how well his works would, would translate to the big screen because I don't think Norwegian Wood really worked. But I, I yeah, I've heard so many good things. Johnny Greenwood. I know. So I think we're going to absolutely love that. So just, well, I'll say that it was, probably would have been on my list and, you know, probably fairly high up. And I don't know why we just didn't get around to it. But it's one of those things. We're saving it for rainy day. Mm. So, but I'm sure that one will be really, really good. I'm really excited to watch that. So, yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah. Tell us your honourable hates. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, we'd love to know what your honourable hates. Please tell me it was the Black Forest. <laughs> I don't get the love for that film whatsoever. And X, nah. I mean, so, yeah. Take it easy, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your holidays if you've still got holidays. Or enjoy the grind if you're back into it. But we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.